Press the button. Any forms of 99.9 .9 damage would be removed from any future Splatoon game, but Splashdown comes back as a special. Sorry, Splashdown comes back. I'll just pray it's not on my weapons. You guys, whoever gets it, you, you can deal with it. <laughs> uh, I'll, you'll at least have a kit without it. So if the other specials are good, then no one will play it and will live. Someone's going to get the Tetra treatment. I don't care. I will remove the 99.9 .9 damage up from all future titles is an absolute blessing for the game. This is Splatoon Would You Rather. It's fairly self-explanatory, and I'm going to take new submissions from viewers pretty soon. So subscribe if you want to submit some ideas, and let's get started with even more of these. Would you rather have a rework for getting abilities on gear or have the feature of making your own kits? This is is one of the few, like I said in my stream title, that people are going to hate me for some of these takes. This is one of them. I would honestly rather have custom kits than a gear system rework. I have that much faith in custom kits being a good idea in Splatoon 3. Like, again, I don't think it would work in 2, but I think it is a great idea for Splatoon 3. I have to be honest. And as bad as the gear system is, I think the potential of custom kits is worth keeping that system. I mean, I did a whole video on it, so you know, it'll be in the description. Push the button and spammable specials are removed, but blasters are also removed. Okay, I hate special spam, but I think if the specials are done better, it's not as bad a problem. So I will not push the button here. I think it's worth keeping blasters. Oh, that is a good one. Would you rather have Splatoon 3 come out in the summer as planned, but it's horrendously rushed, like a repeat single player, missing weapons, one or no modes, unbalanced, or wait an entire extra year where it comes out not rushed? I just want to ask chat this first before I go at it. What about you guys? What would you pick here? Can't have two shitty launches in a row. I can't wait any longer. I don't care if it's rushed. Fix it over time. As a Sonic fan, please take your time. Holy shit, this man knows. <laughs> All right, so 67% of my viewers would rather wait an entire year just to have a more polished game on release. An entire extra year of Splatoon 2. Now listen, there's two answers for me, okay? The content creator side of me that would have to come up with video ideas for an entire other year for Splatoon 2 would like the game to just come out rushed so I can start doing content I want to do. However, the player side of me and the side I'm going to pick does not want to deal with Splatoon 2's launch again. And I think it's incredibly important for the Splatoon series to not have a rushed game. It's what it needs. It needs a better launch. That has been a problem for both games. So I would rather wait the extra year as a, as a whole. I would hate it, but I would rather wait the extra year to have a good game on launch than a rush one. You hear that, Nintendo? Don't rush the game. Would you rather Splatoon 3 be a buggy, unplayable mess that never gets fixed or have it be a great video game, but only be able to watch videos of it? You're not allowed to play it yourself. Do I let everyone else prosper and miss out? Yeah, I think I'd do that. I would, I would be hating it. But if it's a buggy, unplayable mess, I probably wouldn't play it. I think either way, I'm not playing the game. It's just in one reality, other people get to play it. Would you rather have Squid Sisters or Off the Hook? I like both idol groups a lot. Like, I really do. They're cool. That being said... I'm much more invested in Off the Hook, honestly. I'm much more invested in Off the Hook's story, and I think there's much more places they can go with it. Like, I think Off the Hook does not have a complete story, and I think the Squid Sisters do. Like, you could do more with them, but where they are right now, they kind of have a nice arc of, like, getting together, the events of Hero Mode, Agents them breaking apart a bit with time and then them getting back together through the new hero mode. Their story is complete. Off the hook, yeah, A, they have more personality as a duo because they're two very different characters, but B, there's a lot more they can do. The idea of Marina being an Octoling exposed to the Inkling world or like how they develop with time, there's so much more you could do with that group of characters. So again, I like both of them. I just think there's way more you could do with Off the Hook. I hope they do cool stuff with the Squid Sisters too, and I think they can. I just think Off the Hook can get more development. I hope both these groups get it though. I hope it's not just them being tossed aside for a third idol group. I mean, I, I would be okay with third idols, but like, I, I just don't want more characters tossed to the side. We can't have a Agent 4 situation again. That would suck. Would you rather Old Stingray or Old Hammerhead Bridge? Easiest in my life. Old Hammerhead Bridge was a great stage, and Old Stingray was the worst decision Nintendo's ever made in this game. Wait, actually, hold up, hold up. Do you mean Old Ray, like, 
1.3 after it became broken or old ray the underpowered one either way hammerhead is better so yeah we'll we'll bring back hammerhead would you rather have major content locked behind amiibo in splatoon 3 or balloon battle come back as a ranked mode balloon battle is a horrible mode give me the content locked behind the amiibo i already have all the amiibo too i'd be good i just need to get the new ones i'd be fine would you rather have a meta where literally everything is viable but the flow of the game is slow or a meta where only 10 weapons are viable but the game is very fast paced so this is basically would you rather have splatoon 2's meta or splatoon 1's meta <laughs> I'll, I'll take Splatoon 1, honestly. Would you rather only be able to play Splatoon 1 at its peak or Splatoon 2 at its peak? So this is Endgame Splatoon 1 versus 3.2 Splatoon 2. I've covered that one in my meta history video. Endgame Splatoon 1 is just quick respawn, aggressive invincibility. Ah, uh, this is a hard pick, dude. So if it's 3.2, I don't have K-Rapid, but I have a really good Brella, and I have x -Blow, but I also have to deal with Stingray. If I do Splatoon 1, I have Range, H3, and I theoretically could have played Dynamo if I cared about it. And I have Octobrush. Yeah, I kind of play the best weapons in the game in Splatoon 1, so uh, I'm probably gonna pick that. <laughs> it's tough. I, okay, I think 3.2 Splatoon 2 is honestly the better peak. Like, I think that is the better game. However, for my subjective weapon pool, Endgame Splatoon 1 is better. So if we were to throw my weapon pool out the window, I'd pick Splatoon 2, but accounting for it, I'd pick Splatoon 1. Would you rather have a perfect game with no Nintendo eSports support or a shitty game with Nintendo backing tournament prizes. Here's the thing. As of right now, I mean, it doesn't look perfect, but Splatoon 3 looks like the great game with very limited Nintendo support. So I think that's just a more extreme reality of what Splatoon 3 could be. Like, the game better, but Nintendo give no support. And honestly, I make content on the game. I don't play to have competitive Splatoon be my career. Like, that's just not a thing. I would rather have the good video game. If it's not a good video game, and there's prizes, there'd definitely be some people who would play it and maybe even like it well enough to make it a career. But it's like, I would rather have the good video game. That's what I care about more. But you know, I don't I don't care enough about comp in terms of like, I want competitive to be my entire career, so. In Splatoon 3, would you rather have loads of new weapons and weapon types, but not many good new stages or several interesting stages, but not many new weapons. Honestly, we already have a lot of weapons. I really want both, but I'd say the stages are more important. Like we already have the huge weapon variety. So if we have a variety of good new stages, plus the variety we have in two, plus only a tiny bit more, that's still insane. And the stages are just so important to enjoying the game. I hate Splatoon 2's maps, dude. I swear these rotations are gonna be the reason I never come back to the game outside of PBs. When you press the button, jump RNG is removed from all range blasters, but all the kits are more anchor focused. For example, Point Sensor Stingray. I think range with no jump RNG would just be so fun. But man, I want a fun kit. I think it would be worth it to have jump RNG if I get something like Splat Bomb Zipcaster. It's a tough one, but if we're assuming range is gonna get a fun kit, then I would rather take the one with the fun kit. I think that would be the better weapon in the game too. Like, as cool as no jump RNG would be, I'd rather have the kit. Would you rather have an unbalanced tier list of weapons dominate the meta but are super fun and high skill to use or have all weapons be balanced and have potential variety but all are more boring and less skillful this is just splatoon 1 versus splatoon 2 again <laughs> it's the same thing so my answer is the same i'd rather take the splatoon 1 one variety is not everything man but like i'd rather have the top tiers all be fun and have a high potential to be pushed but that's gonna be it for this episode let me know if you guys agree and i'll see you all next time